Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Writer here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have a patient here who attended with bilateral occluding earwax. They also suffer from Parkinson's disease and as a result over the years they've developed this head tremor and you may be able to see that on screen as I'm performing the procedure. Of course when a patient has a head tremor it can make the procedure just a tad more difficult to perform because we're in the ear with two instruments um, and we don't want to be bumping into the side of the ear canal walls or the eardrum. However, their head tremor was quite consistent, it's quite rhythmic and that helped me perform the procedure because uh, I was anticipating uh, the movements from side to side. Um, so it wasn't too much of a, a, a limitation for me to, in order to remove the earwax. Now you may be able to see that at the back of the eardrum, you can see the eardrum pulsing and this was synchronous with their inspiration and expiration. And that's due to a condition called patulous eustachian tube. So you may have heard me in previous videos discuss the eustachian tube. Um, so the eustachian tube is a, a narrow orifice that connects the middle ear, so the cavity behind the eardrum to the back of the nose. And the primary function of the eustachian tube is to equalise the air pressure in the middle ear. Ideally, we want the air pressure behind the eardrum to be equal to the air pressure in the ear canal and the atmosphere. So when you've got the air pressure equal either side of the eardrum, that's when the eardrum is most mobile. And that's when we hear the best. The eustachian tube is also a drain pipe. So any fluid that collects behind the eardrum, it can drain away. Now, the eustachian tube is typically under normal resting conditions um, shut at the back of the nose. And it's only when we, uh, during the course of the day, when we swallow, yawn or chew, uh, automatically the eustachian tube, the muscles either side, they contract and the contraction of the muscles cause the eustachian tube to open. And that momentary opening of the eustachian tube allows the air pressure to equalise and any fluid that's accumulated behind uh, the middle ear, behind the eardrum to drain out. Now, the eustachian tube is normally shut for good reason because it helps prevent upper respiratory tract infection, so the back of the nose, for example, to travelling up the eustachian tube and infecting the middle ear cavity behind the eardrum. In addition, a blocked eustachian tube, or should I say, the eustachian tube being closed under normal conditions, also prevents us from hearing our internal respiratory sounds or the sound of our own voice or when we're eating and chewing or the, uh, the crunching and biting in our ear. That's because these sounds can travel up the nose, up the eustachian tube and vibrate against the eardrum inside the, the middle ear. So, of course, sounds can travel through the ear canal and hit the eardrum, but they can also travel up the nose and hit the eardrum from the underside. And we don't want to be hearing these internal sounds because it'll be quite annoying. So that's another reason why the eustachian tube is normally shut. But when you've got a patchless eustachian tube, the, the eustachian tube no longer remains shut under normal resting conditions and instead it's open. So this patient, when she was breathing in and out, the, the inspiration, the breath in, the, it was travelling up her nose, up the eustachian tube and bouncing on the underside of the eardrum when she's ex 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 expiring back out, when she's breathing back out, um, the air pressure came back out. And that, that movement, that atmospheric pr air pressure changes up the back of her nose was being uh, visible, made visible by the eardrum moving in synchrony with her breath. Um, reasons for a patchy cessation tube is sudden weight loss, so there's less fatty tissue, which helps to close the eustachian tube under normal conditions. Um, uh, you, people can develop patchouli station tube after heavy exercise, so the blood that would normally uh, be sent to the back of the nose is relocated to working muscles, which means there's less dilation of blood vessels at the back of the nose, so less natural inflammation, if you like. And um, women who are uh, going through pregnancy can experience patchouli station tube, and that's because the body's preparing itself to give birth, so all the muscles... Uh, relax, uh, which means the eustachian tube can then um, remain open. Um, so these are all potential uh, reasons why people develop patchouli eustachian tube. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care.